Hey, I'm Anthony. Welcome to Machine Right. Today, we build a vacuum chamber. For this build, I purchased a cooking pot, a piece of half-inch polycarbonate, and silicone RTV. I start by tracing the outer diameter of the pot as a guideline, as the pot was not completely cylindrical. I then find the center of the stock by using a center finder and mark a line from two points. I use a compass to draw out accurate circles for my cut border lines. I do this for both the ID and the OD. I head to my mill to start the drilling and cutting operations. I use a scrap piece of wood and send a piece of polycarbonate on top. Drill a hole in the center with the drill bit about 30 thousandths of an inch smaller than the wood screw. I drill a pilot hole in the center of my outline I drew earlier and follow with a larger drill bit to complete the required bore size of the end mill. Please note that most end mills do not have the capability to center cut and do not like to be plunged straight down. This is why we drill this relief hole. I then insert the end mill and take the depth of cut of about 30 to 50 thousandths of an inch per pass. This is roughly about the thickness of three to four business cards. Once the slot is complete, I move the end mill half an inch from the slot to round the sides of the top. This part is strictly for aesthetics and not necessary if you prefer a square top. And yes, my end mill does have center cutting, so I can get away with plunging. I then drill a pilot hole for the fittings. These can be located anywhere you prefer. I switch the drill bit and drill the remaining holes to the clearance diameter of my fittings. And we're done with the milling and drilling. I laser cut a squeegee out of acrylic to apply the silicone to the proper height to prevent the pot from being pushed too far down. You can easily make this without a laser. I apply the silicone RTV and make sure that I apply a liberal amount, but not too much to where Republicans hate me. I then use the laser cut piece to set the height of the first layer of silicone. I apply my second layer and then smooth the top with the razor blade. I apply some Vaseline as a release agent, as this is adhesive based silicone. I then put the top of the pot on the silicone we just applied, wait for it to dry, and pull the top off. I remove the protective masking to pull any silicone that made its way past the slot. I do the same for the back as well. I then add two quarter inch NPT bulkheads to ensure an airtight seal for my fittings. I grab a vacuum gauge with a quarter inch NPT with a lower mount configuration to monitor the amount of vacuum I'm pulling. I use a T fitting to allow me to use two quarter inch NPT ball valves. I pretty much add Teflon tape to any connection with the thread and tighten firmly. This is the quarter inch NPT ball valve. I attach both quarter inch NPT ball valves to the T fitting and tighten. I use a quick connect fitting to easily attach and detach my vacuum pump. And there it is, 
the completed vacuum chamber. But I think we can add a little flair by adding a custom sticker I made with my vinyl cutter. This design was made for my friend Nick Ferry. Link in the description below. Now it's time to test the vacuum chamber. I grab my Part A and Part B platinum silicone and mix vigorously. Once mixed, I put the container in the chamber. I put my lid on top of the pot and prep the vacuum. I'm using a 7 CFM vacuum pump for my chamber, but you can go with a much lower CFM unit. I connect the vacuum, open the valve valve, and watch the silicone grow. Please note that silicone expands two to three times its volume, so it's okay to release some vacuum to prevent the silicone from spilling over into the container. I then pour the silicone into a mold box with my friend Nick Ferry's 3D printed logo that I made for him. After I pour the silicone, I wait for it to cure. I use 91% rubbing alcohol to release the hot glue surrounding my mold box. Once done, I remove the acrylic sides. I then pull the 3D print out of the mold and the mold is complete. I grab some talcum powder and apply it to my mold. This causes the resin to absorb finer details and reduces bubbles in the resin, especially on the corners. I then pour some resin into the mold and move the resin around slowly. Once cured, I pull the resin part out slowly from the mold. The remaining flashing can be removed with a fingernail or exacto knife. That's it! Finished bubble free resin copy. I think this project turned out well. Some people might say it sucks because it's a it's a vacuum. So it sucks. I did use a mill, but you can usually use a drill press or a router with a circle jig. But I have absolutely zero bubbles in my silicone mold, like zero. As you can see right here. Now I did this, this was a 3D printed logo of my friend Nick Ferry. He has a channel right here, as well in the description, take a look there. He does woodworking and theater props, so do take a look at his channel, he has some really cool stuff. Finished project, finished product of the resin is here, here are two examples. Uh, this was 3D printed, I smoothed it, made sure it was all nice and pretty and flat and you know nice, which I'm going to have a, a video of in the future. And then I poured the resin into the mold and it came out great. No bubbles. I mean, perfect. Talcum powder really helped out. Seriously, thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. This is my first video, so let me know your thoughts down below. If you did enjoy this video, like, comment, and subscribe. I have some seriously cool content coming up soon, so if you do subscribe, stay tuned. Seriously. Have a great day. See you next time.